We're here today with August Aguilar, an indie indie film creator. How's it going, August? I am good, man. How are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good seeing you. And if y'all haven't seen part two, go check it out on YouTube. Well, part one, this is part two. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question. Do you do like a, a casting call for the, the people in your film? Yeah, yeah. Um, for every project that we do, when it's when it's time to get locked and loaded for it, we end up, we'll do a casting call for it. Uh, usually it's just really put out on Facebook or something, uh, a few different Facebook groups and the Strange Films uh, Facebook page itself. But uh, when, we're, when we're set on doing something, uh, we definitely do have a casting call and we, we try to send it out pretty loud and clear and it gets, it gets filled pretty quickly usually. All right. And do you... Do you write and film? Yeah, yeah. Um, Since the beginning, I've been the writer for pretty much every film except for um, the Center City series of our of our work. Um, My my dad, Frank Aguilar, he uh, he's he's writer for that series. I I pitch in, you know, with some ideas here and there, or help. uh, I'll add things when we're shooting and whatnot. But he's the main writer for that series. Everything else in the series, though, I've been. uh, I've been the main writer and uh, I'm the director of every film. Nice. Do you, do you shoot around your city or do you go to different locations? Just depends. Um, both, I guess. I mean, I'm based out in Knoxville, Tennessee, so I have a lot of projects I've done in this area that I shoot all around this area. And then again, the center city series, um, I go to Philadelphia and I'll actually shoot uh, projects around that area. And, there's been a couple of films like uh, Cindy's Birthday Party and uh, Happy Mother's Day. We shot outside of Philly a little bit. Still, I was it was still a playing trip going up north. I was doing some Center City stuff, but we actually shot um, those horror films also while I was up in the area. Uh, but you know, I, I like to travel, so if the opportunity arises, you know, I'll definitely uh, travel and shoot. All right, and I know your newest film is The Lion's Den. Did you have trouble with the prosthetics? The Lion's Den, um, well, I, I work with a guy named Eric Jackson. He's a really great, phenomenal makeup artist. Uh, I've known him since 2017. He worked on my films Passenger. He worked on um, Subject. And uh, when we did The Lion's Den, it was actually an idea that he proposed to me one day uh, earlier in the year. He just he wanted to work together again, and I, uh, I always love working with him. He's worked on, like, TV shows like The Walking Dead and stuff. I mean, he's like phenomenal. Um, But he said he had an idea that he wanted to make a lion monster. So he just literally just said, I just want to make a lion monster, whatever, you know, whatever you can do with that idea, let me know. And I said, okay, let me get back to you. And I wrote The Lion's Den in like a couple weeks and uh, uh, the idea of it. And I gave gave it back to him and he loved it. And then that's when I just kind of put the ball in motion and uh, we went to shoot it and i trust eric completely with whatever he does like i'm not going to say like oh well i think it needs to look like this or i imagine it looking like that i just trust what he does so whenever we work together all all i need or all he needs to tell me is he's got this idea and i give him the actor and i let him go and he he comes up he came out with the, the amazing makeup for the lion's den um made the lion monster and same thing with passenger and subject all right, nice. And do you fully fund them, fund all of these films yourself, or do you do like a fundraiser? Um, so not well. For the filmmaking process of every film that we've done so far, it's actually been done on a no budget scale. I mean, the only time I've ever put funds into these projects have been, um, you know, just to feed the cast and crew, get some gas money. Um, pay you know for makeup supplies if i need to or some props or just stuff like that you know uh really less at most a few hundred dollars and that's like that's really if i'm pushing like just to get a lot of extra stuff in it Mm -hmm. but mostly it's all done on no budget uh not having to pay for anything or go shoot or pay for anywhere to shoot or anything like that as well uh the only time we've done fundraisers uh we use kickstarter and we've done uh three kickstarters so far and two of them were for our comic books that we launched uh we talked about that i think the last time we were talking and uh you know that was just to kind of help get some of that artwork paid for and and get the the books printed and whatnot and both those kickstarters got uh overfunded 
And the uh, other Kickstarter is actually going on right now, which is basically doing the same thing, but putting all our films on Blu-ray disc and getting people a copy of all of our films and um, some really, really cool physical media to go along with it. Uh, but as far as the filmmakings go, I mean, we're probably not going to do actually like major funding until we do like a feature film or some sort, you know. So uh, all these short films, I mean, unless it requires some crazy special circumstance, I, I'm, I can probably do it without a budget. Hmm. All right. Um, what difficulties did you run into making the, the Blu-ray? So the Blu-ray has been a process I've been working on for a while now. Um, the idea of the Blu-ray has been in my mind for a, a year or two, um, but it was always just kind of figuring out how to, you know, make it happen. How, how do you get a Blu-ray, you know? Uh, and believe it or not, in 2021, it's a lot harder to get your movies printed on Blu-ray discs than you'd think, uh, or, or even doing it yourself, you know? But, you know so what I wanted, I'm, I'm one of these people who I love to make very very cool quality things but you know on a good budget you know like i don't i'm not going to spend a lot a lot of money if i don't have to mm -hmm. um I, I like to do things myself so i was in the process of trying to figure out how to make um these blu-rays by myself so i was trying to find software how to make dvd menus and how to i was buying i was buying like cd burners and stuff like that uh to make my own stuff and eventually I came across a few different softwares I liked. I came across um, some ideas I liked. And I started doing it at home by myself. And I made a bootleg copy of uh, you know, my Strange Films collection. Uh, building the DVD software, like um, the menus and stuff, was actually one of the harder things to do. Um, but once I did that, it took, it took way too long. And also it took, like, realistically, if you think about all the supplies that you need to do, like, a mass order of all these things, it's, like, ridiculous. So, like, I found a... A really cool website, uh, Kunaki, who's doing these, um, uh, doing the manufacturing part of the the Blu-ray. I just need to provide the file for them. Uh, okay. So I built the file, I built the uh, the software or the uh, the DVD menus and everything. And this is uh, the test, uh, or this is the very first copy right here, the Blu-ray. I mean, it came out perfect. Um, but yeah, it's got it's got all the films all set on different menus and. Music videos are on there, some commentary, some extra bonus shorts on there. So, uh, so yeah, just the process of actually trying to figure out how to do it and make it happen was the hardest part. And now that I've figured all that out, it's like super easy to kind of move forward. All right, are we gonna get? Are you gonna keep doing DVD? Well, not DVDs, Blu-rays moving forward of collections. Yeah, I think so. I think well, what's cool about this one is I feel like for me it's like a celebration of everything that I. I started and that I've accomplished in the last, um, I guess we're going on five years with strange films. Uh, so, I mean, if you think about it, we've done a lot of work. Um, we've done over a dozen short films, over a dozen different music videos, over, you know, a dozen different other projects related to like documentaries and events and this and that. Uh, we've done a lot of different things, um, in five years. And it's really, really cool to see all that, you know, put together, but COVID just like, he slammed the brakes on everything, you know, I mean, for everyone, of course, but um, it really, for us, we had a really, really big year lined up for 2020, and when COVID hit, everything just shut down. We were lucky to even pull off the lion's den halfway through that, you know, so uh, for me, this Blu-ray is a really, really great idea to kind of just celebrate everything we've done with our nine best films, um, some of my favorite music videos I've ever done, uh, you know, some you know, the behind the scenes stuff that we've done for it. And then some uh, additional random stuff that I shot. Uh, and I like to think that when we do another batch of uh, films later on and we've improved our craft and we keep growing these stories out and this and that, you know, we'll have a strange films volume two, another collection of films, another collection of videos and bonus features and whatnot. Uh, you know, maybe we'll get to a, a giant big box set one day where it has every single thing I've ever done one day. But, uh, you know, uh, same thing with feature films, though. If we get to a feature film point in one day, we'll definitely make DVD, Blu-ray copies of the films uh, itself. And I'm actually already trying to do another um, DVD, Blu-ray of just a collection of all my music videos and a collection of, like, other different things. You know, just really, you know, some of it's for me, some of it's for other people who actually like my work a lot, you know, who wants to keep seeing this stuff. But, uh, but this Strange Films Blu-ray and DVD right now is... Uh, is really just a big celebration of the last five years of everything we've done. All right, let's see. 
are you open to filming commissions if people are in the area? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, that's actually uh, – last year I was actually trying to get in a little bit more stuff like that. I, I've been approached numerous times to be a director on someone else's project or help write someone else's project or help even shoot someone else's project. And, um, you know, that's something I actually really want to do. There's it, Sometimes it's like – it's exhausting maybe sometimes to even think – Oh, I, I'm doing I'm doing everything on strange films, you know, myself, and like I'm I'm putting together all these things, all these ideas myself. And sometimes I exhaust myself with my own ideas, if that makes sense. So like I like to maybe go to a third party or a third, you know, another angle, and and if I can be a new addition to someone else's project and bring something to that project, I mean, that'd be a, a thrill for me. You know, I think it'd be really really cool to bring what I know how to do with directing and editing or writing or shooting or whatever it is into someone else's work and they um they you know they want me to be there so that's that's something um that was in the works last year that was in discussions with numerous people but again covid and and then you know i have a, we're having a baby on the way so just things were just kind of really just tightened up for me so i'm staying at home behind the scenes for now um but in the future yeah i mean i definitely uh I guess the only the last person I actually had some sort of work like that with was uh, my buddy Blake Hall. He uh, he just made a film called Cadence, and I was like a producer on that. Um, I helped him write the script a little bit and uh, kind of helped him structure things out and you know whatnot. So we we I did a lot of consulting back and forth with him, um, and then we actually produced the Under Strange film. So it's actually the very first film that's produced uh, by another director under the Strange Films banner. But, um, yeah, I definitely would like to keep doing stuff like that later on. Is that film on the DVD? Well, the Blu-ray? <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually not. It's uh, It came out just back in um, – it came out just a few weeks ago uh, in mid-January or so. And um, I I considered putting it on the Blu-ray, but I was already already having, like, um, the file basically done by then and when he released it. So, this is like I said, this process has been taking me – I've been really working hardcore on this since, like, December or something. So uh, wow. a lot of the stuff that uh, was already set in stone was pretty much ready to go by the time his release was out. But I definitely plan on having his uh, film cadence on a future uh, disc of some sort. You know, it just depends on what I'm going to bundle it with or what we got going on at the time. All right. What would you say your favorite film is? If you had to pick one of the films that you filmed, what would you say your favorite would be? E, that is a tough one. Or top uh, three. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll say this. I'll say this. My favorite film probably still holds true to be Center City, which is really funny because it's the film I was, like, the least – not least involved with, but the least, like, I never knew how it was ever going to come to life, you know, because it was my second film I ever did. And my, my dad, Frank, uh, he he wrote it, and when he gave me the script to it, he – you know, it was – it's – if you've ever seen it or if anyone's ever watched Center City, Center City's a, a black and white crime like drama film in in Philadelphia and it's shot all around Philly. I mean, it's like a lot of moving pieces going on and there's a lot of different locations and a lot of movement and all these wild scenes in it. And uh, when I read that script, I was like, there's no way I can do this, dude. I just <laughs> I barely even finished my first one. You know, I don't know how to shoot this. And but for some reason, somehow everything worked out so well in that film and so naturally in that film that it came out just like beautiful. And I, I, I still call it like my Mona Lisa of all my work. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it, I would never think like, you know, me doing a second film would look like that, you know, it, and, and came out like that. And also it's gained the most attention, you know, I mean, it's a really, it's like a cult classic in Philadelphia right now. I mean, the Philadelphia film society features it and stuff like that. So like, it's a lot of really, there's a lot of great memories and a lot of heart in that film. And, um, you know, me and my dad did it. So it's really special to me. Um, so, but center city, I'd say, um, I would have to say my other favorites would probably be like happy mother's day. That's a recent film we did a couple years ago. Uh, and probably some of my best directing. I feel like I, I got to put into that film. Um, uh, my, my actress, Marianne Fisher, she became an award winning actress from that film. I mean, that's a really, really awesome. Oh, right terrifying film for me and then pandora which is another recent film was award-winning film and i just again the 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 experience i've had over the years is just you can just kind of tell it's elevated in that film tremendously and uh i'd say the last 
top three, if I had to pick a outside standard city, would probably be, I'd say, a subject because that's my brother and Tyler McKee and me and him. We just kind of get together and we we shot that without a script and we just like we just got in his apartment and just started shooting things and that's just how me and my brother work and that's just uh it's just another good memory for me like having a good time with him and so uh yeah i don't know those are some of my favorites all right when when you start filming do you do like small premieres for your family and friends to get feedback or do you just film it polish it and release it uh the process usually goes like i uh i do a rough edit for my, I, I pretty much like I lock in my my own creative zone for a while and I do an edit and I take my time doing it but once I feel like I have a good like rough cut mm-hmm. uh, at, when I say rough cut I mean like it's obviously rough there's no special music or things added to it but it's like you can tell what the film's gonna look like you know so like I send that to my dad first because he's always like my best critic. He he tells me how it is he he me and him have the same kind of interests and same eye on things. Uh, so we, I sent it to him. He tells me what he likes, what he doesn't like, this and that. And I already have an idea of how I'm working on the next cut after that. So I'll be uh, working on the next cut. Once I get the final cut, though, it's um, and I feel like it's it's done, it's ready to go. I will only show my dad, probably like my brother, you know, maybe my my mom or some other family, you know. Um, and maybe one close friend, just to kind of like you said, get some feedback, just to kind of see what other people are seeing you know and then once i but you know regardless of how that goes i always plan a a release of some sort and usually that lines up with a film festival or an event or some sort of you know public screening with some people you know and that's uh trying to get the cast out there trying to get the crew out there trying to get some audience who love strange films to come out there you know regardless if it's a film festival of course you're going to have the film festival attendees there you're going to have the events of whatever's going on, you know, there. So I try to time it out with that. Um, so if it's another like a month release or another month ahead of when I'm actually done with the film, I'll wait that month for that. Um, but once I have that first like public screening, uh, regardless who was there, who wasn't there, I just post it online and I do like a big like timed thing, you know, special announcement saying, oh, we're going to release this on Friday on virtually, you know, come check it, you know, check it out launches on our facebook launches on our youtube channel and this and that so uh the lion's den was probably the only thing that was a little different because COVID again so uh we i did a virtual um release on that it did it still premiered at a film festival but i mean the film festival is really you know it wasn't really going on you know in person so uh so yeah we did a virtual release for that one but usually for everything else we we do like a we try to do like a public release first all right. Well, that's all the time we got now, August. Is there anything you want to say to the people before we go? Well, uh, if you like horror films, if you like 70s, 80s, bizarre horror madness, uh, you know, check out Strange Films. We got uh, our Kickstarter going on right now. You can get a copy of this uh, Blu-ray and get some posters with it and get some T-shirts and get uh, some CDs, uh, our comic books uh, that we talked about a while before. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, if not, you can just check out our website. You can check out our YouTube channel. All the films are there. You can watch. Um, you know, I appreciate you always having me and talking to me and supporting our work. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely, man.